What's up, guys? I hope everyone's having a great day today, whatever you might be doing out in the world. What I'm doing right now is, well, what we're doing now is we're looking at the Comica CVM-VM10. This is the version 2. Never had version 1, so I can't really comment on it. But this is a super tiny shotgun microphone that doesn't require phantom power, nor does it require a battery. So you just plug it into your camera and you're ready to start recording. Super small, it's made out of aluminum, has a really good build quality. Um, and they're calling it the Micro Compact Directional Condenser Shotgun Video Microphone. And it works with uh, your GoPro or your cell phones too. So you just plug it in and uh, yeah, you got some really good audio. And I would definitely say I've listened to this and tested it out a little bit. This microphone does sound very good. But you don't have to take my word for it because what I'm going to do is do some tests. I'm actually going to uh, compare four different microphones. I'll put them up on the screen. They range anywhere from $40 all the way up to about $330. So I will label them one through four. I will put in the description which ones they are, but I really would like you to listen for yourself and tell me which one you think sounds the best. But first, let's see what comes in the box. You actually have a nice carry case for the microphone and all the accessories that come with it. You have a shock mount, you have a pop filter, you have the microphone itself, you have a wind muff, aka dead cat, and you also have two different cables, one for your phone or one for your camera. I might point out that the wind muff might be just a hair too big, if you know what I mean. If you look at it here, just like it's a hair too big. Uh, but besides that, it still gets the job done. All right, guys, so I'm going to read an article that I found online called Know Your Joe, Five Things You Didn't Know About Coffee, written by Allison Eldridge. And I'm going to read each number with a different microphone. I'm not going to tell you what microphone I'm using. I want you to listen and just what one sounds best to you. Um, I will put in the description so you'll see one, two, three, four, five and the uh, order that I used them. So with that being said, we'll just go ahead and start this off. Uh, people are unable to function before their morning cup of coffee. You may have singled out caffeine as the source of its power, but how much do they really know about coffee? Here are five tidbits of trivia to ponder as you percolate. Number five. To bean or not to bean? First things first, although widely called coffee beans, the part of the plant that is roasted and ground to make your morning or afternoon or evening or snack time, cup is actually a seed. It is the pit of a red fruit called a coffee cherry. Technically, the word bean only refers to the seeds of plants in the family Fab Fabicia. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. Let's move on to number four. All right, on to number four, snack that packs a punch. Legend has it that Goat Herd first discovered coffee when his goats ate some coffee cherries and went a bit wild with the caffeine high. Whether or not that story has roots, in fact, coffee was originally consumed by humans as a food rather than a drink. Early African tribes would mix the coffee fruit and seeds with animal fat to make a sort of energy snack. All right, on to number three, simultaneously the most and least desirable. The world's most expensive coffee is a type called Kopi Lowak. Originally from Indonesia, this unique type of coffee is harvested after being digested and excreted by the Asian palm kivet, a small cat-like mammal. Put more bluntly, it's poop coffee. Apparently, the digestion process gives the coffee a complex, rounded taste, and consumers are willing to pay $50 or more per cup. Alrighty, on to number two here. The world's first webcam was created to keep tabs on a pot of coffee, namely the pot of coffee in the Trojan Room computer lab at the University of Cambridge. People working at the lab could access real-time images of the pot to know whether or not they could get their caffeine on. A few years after its initial debut, the pot achieved international celebr celebrity when its images were made accessible via the internet. The Trojan Room coffee webcam was online for 10 years, from 1991 to 2001, and was viewed by millions from all around the world. Alright, on to number one, coffee, coffee everywhere. 
A good cup of joe really brings the world together. Coffee is the second most traded commodity on earth. So what's the first? Oil. Luckily, coffee doesn't cause as much commotion as its fellow go juice. If only we could get it to power our cars. That's been attempted with some success. But who would waste all the delicious coffee? All right, guys, so that basically sums it up. I went ahead and put the microphone back on just so you can get a few more sound clips, uh, examples of how it sounds. Um, but to me, I think it sounds really, really good. And it's really, really small. I don't have to carry around a big, big microphone. This thing is, like, really, really small. And besides that, it doesn't take batteries or phantom power. You just plug it in and go with it. The only thing I did notice, and I guess this would be the only negative, is that... With the shock mount included, when I go ahead and make adjustments of the camera, like I say, I mess with my ISO here, that you're able to hear me adjust those. Or if I zoom in or out, you can hear those real fine noises from the camera. So if you're not, if you just have it on a tripod like I do now, or you're doing handheld, or you have it on a gimbal, uh, you're not going to have those issues. So I'll put a link in the description. Make sure you let me know how you think this sounds. I really want to know what you guys think. And that's it. Thanks for watching.